Now then, people, good morning and welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. And we're another day closer now to the biggest game in football. It is, of course, Leeds United versus Southampton in the playoff final this Sunday, 3pm. And as it gets closer, of course, the tension uh, builds between two sets of fans. We will be doing a preview with Match Day Vlogs tonight, 7 o'clock. Be there or be square. Make sure you do join us that's already set up on the channel so go on over smash a like get ready yeah we're, we're talking wwe vibes yeah this is what we've gone with me and jack and um, but today we're here to talk about russell martin and daniel farker and the history that they have we know they have worked together in the past for a brief period at norwich city back in 2017 when russell martin was one of the senior pros there and uh, daniel farker came in russell martin was excited about playing under daniel farker however daniel farker quickly realized that maybe it was a power play we'll get into that in a little bit uh in a in a few moments but um yeah martin wasn't a major part of farker's squad at Carrow road he opted for other defensive options went down a younger route and uh, basically, Russell Martin was was bombed out. Um, he had spells on loan at Rangers and Walsall before uh, ended up at uh, MK Dons and um, almost um, pulling the rug under uh, Paul's to his tail and, and taking the manager's job there. Um, <laughs> I kid, of course, but what we're going... To, well, do I? I don't know. Maybe he's a little bit... I'm a snake. Uh, anyway, please smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and, of course, hit that notification bell. Right. What we're going to do is going to be taking a look at an interview that Russell Martin did with the Talk Norwich City boys, okay? The link to this video and their channel is in the description. I'm going to show you a clip and then we're just going to pick it apart. Let me know what you think, guys, and girls and everything in between. You were excited about Farker. Yeah. You said he was a man. Got that wrong, didn't I? You were willing to Can play they? for <laughs> Straight away, folks, there's a little bit of needle there. You can hear it, right? Got that wrong, did I? You know what I mean? He was excited to work under Daniel Farker. And straight away comes that line, yeah, I got that wrong, didn't I? Because obviously, maybe Farker wasn't excited or as excited to work with Martin as he was the other way. Obviously, I just signed a new contract. Plan was kind of in place with Stuart and the club and finish at Norwich with the hope of starting to work there as well. This is another thing I want to pick apart here as well, where he mentions the plan was new long-term deal and then start to work there. Maybe work with the youngsters, then move on, on and end up, being the guy at the top, like he did at MK Dons, yeah? Um, I think, personally, Russell Martin... Look, you've got to look after number one, right? So he's thinking, my long-term future, I want to manage this football club. Daniel Farker comes in. Probably Daniel Farker might sense there's a little bit of power there or an imbalance, and he wants to take over that dressing room. And it clearly sounds that Russell... Ma look... Russell Martin's a great coach. He's worked at MK Dons, worked at Swansea, done really, really well. He was clearly or had ambitions to go far in the game, and he looks like he's going to do that. I'm not going to get away from that fact. I'm just trying to understand why there is that little bit of needle. Of course, both Farker and Russell Martin will say it's not the case, but you can tell from this piece here for me that there is a little bit there because straight away, I got it wrong, didn't I? You know, I wanted to work under him. And then he talks there about potentially working for the football club. Well, who Kaibos? That. And Daniel had other plans, and it became fa fairly obvious fairly quickly. Daniel Farker kiboshed that. Yeah, unfortunately, also, uh, I left, I went on loan to Rangers. With that line there as well, Daniel had other plans. I don't care what anyone says. Ultimately, Russell Martin will be a proud man. Football is a proud man, right? Listen, I don't know him personally, right? But, but he had these ambitions, and one man kiboshed that, and that man was Daniel Farker. Be interesting to see what, what Russell Martin's response will be when he's no longer a manager and he's on under the cosh or something like that, because we hear it all the time. That that podcast really opened my eyes. We see now footballers, managers, they speak more candidly about what really goes on in the game. And it wouldn't surprise me if Russell Martin, yeah, he's been quite nice, I feel, in this in this uh, in this exchange with the Tottenham Norwich City lads, but um it clearly wrangled him. Yeah, summer summer came and it was obvious it wasn't gonna really be part of the plans again. I was mm. totally out of it. I was training with a twenty three. So here's another thing for me as well, right? He talks about being a big part of something. I was a big part of Norwich City. And I wasn't even a bit part. I was training with the under-23s. I even tried to help them out. So, that again, that must be, from Martin Russell Martin's perspective, that's tough. Big part of a football club. Manager comes in. You've already spoken behind the scenes to Stuart Webber. You know, you could potentially work for the club further down the line. 
And this guy's come in and said, nah, you're not for me. He's bombed him out on loan. He's then come back, and he's not even training with the first-team squad. He's now with the under-23s. That'll sting. But it just became difficult. It was the right time to leave, so off I went. You thought there was almost a power issue with Farker, and he wanted that control. It's quite interesting here at this point what Chris makes about, you know, um, the power play maybe, and, and that's how he felt it when he, when he got rid of some of the older pros. And Chris will know much more than me. But I'm just trying to think from a Leeds United perspective, like, have we had situations like that this season? I know this is sort of going off piece from the Russell Martin, but this is a great insight, really, into Daniel Fark, and I, uh, and I implore you all to go watch it. But I'm trying to think if we've had similar instances at Leeds United this season. I would argue we have, not from an old pro, but with, with Charlie Creswell and his dad. You know, um, he's kept him around the place, but he's not given him a, he's not given him a go at all, has he, really? Um, and obviously his dad spoke about him getting minutes, etc. And, you know, that got resolved. But then he sort of punished him throughout the season by not giving him a fair crack. And and listen, I'm not here to criticise Fark. I love the guy, me. But but he is. it, it does show that authoritarian figure. You know, Wes Hulahan spoke a little bit earlier on about double, triple sessions. And if they were younger, they'd have fit him more and all that sort of stuff. And you look at the core group of our squad, he's quite young. But I do also feel at the same time, it, it's the lack of experience that's that's let us down. And that's probably bang on what Chris is saying there. Maybe they, they shouldn't have gone too soon, perhaps. I, I certainly thought that neither of them should have gone when they went. The manager could have used them more as a resource. Yeah, just an interesting footnote there, you know, where I can see sort of similarities. Was there a power issue? Did you feel like Daniel didn't like having them experienced players around? This is the juicy stuff in it. You want to know, right? Come on, tell us, tell us. <laughs> Well, he hadn't had it, had he? He was an under-23s yeah. manager at, at Dortmund. And maybe stupidly, I think a lot of people said, I really tried to help him even when I was out of it. That's quite interesting there where he says, probably stupidly, I tried to help him. It's almost like the mask slipped a little bit for me. It's almost, because, yeah, look, I tried to happen, but probably stupidly I tried to do that. And maybe after the fact, with hindsight, it's a case of, why the fuck did I try to help the guy that bombed me out of the football club? Do you see what I'm saying? Let's just listen to that again. Maybe I'm, listen, again, this is just an opinion piece, how I'm reading this, right? Like I do with the press conferences, etc. something similar. But I, I, I see that as him saying, <laughs> with hindsight, what the f did I try to help that guy for? Because he bombed me out. Probably, and, and maybe stupidly, I think a lot of people have said, I really tried to help him. It's quite interesting as well that he mentions, like, a lot of people have said, probably stupidly, I tried to help him. Again, that little bit of needle. There's that little bit of needle between the two. I won't have said any other different. You know what I mean? Who doesn't love the drama? <laughs> it was obvious to us, I mean, myself and, and Nazy, we knew it was going to change. I probably needed it. So yeah, point. I think yeah, so. Yeah. Almost admitting, though, right, that, that Farker was right in the end. Because look what Norwich did. You know, look what Norwich went on to achieve uh, under Daniel Farker. So... There is a, a sense of, do you know what? Yeah, he bombed me out, but he was right in the end. And maybe that's where it has softened over time, potentially. Look, folks, it, it's clear there's needles. It's clear there's issues. be interesting to to hear Daniel Farker's take on it. I know he said before, you know, there isn't there isn't anything. But, yeah, um, <laughs> it adds that little bit of spice, doesn't it? And look, at the end of the day, Russell Martin has done the double over him this season, and it will give him that, that added... Steel that added, you know, pressure of wanting to beat Daniel Farker, of wanting to beat Leeds United. It's a lovely little side note. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, it all feeds into it, man. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed doing it. I've enjoyed doing it. Big up to the Talk Norwich City lads, Chris uh, Reeve and the gang. I put the link to that video to their content uh, in in the description as well. It's a great, it's a great insight. To be fair, um, let me know your thoughts though. Please smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, hit that notification. I'll see you in a bit. Peace out, Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.